Hi everyone and welcome back to Interview Chronicles season 3. Today we are in the 41st episode of this series and we have Preeti here with us today who has been recently placed at Kinaxis as a part of her campus placements at VIT. She is here to share her interview experience with us but before we talk to her let's look at the eligibility criteria. So all students belonging to CSC and IT backgrounds were eligible provided they had a CGPA of 8 or 80% in their 10th 12th as well as in their pursuing degree with no standing arrears. Now let's go ahead and talk to Preeti to understand her experience interviewing for this company. Firstly welcome to my channel and congratulations on your placement. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello. Yeah. So, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yeah, sure. So, hello everyone. My name is Preeti Sathandavan. I am currently pursuing my B.Tech in Computer Science and Engineering at Vellore Institute of Technology, Chennai. I am currently in my final year. Uh, so, talking about uh, the different experiences that I've had uh, during the last three years in college. Uh, so, during uh, the summer of 2023, that is this year, I had the opportunity to do two internships at the same time. one in a company called uh, quintessence business solutions and services uh, where i worked as a machine learning engineer and a data analyst and in second in a company called cartex or cravingo where i worked as a data science intern so apart from that uh, previously last year i did an internship in a company called cloudify technologies which is one of the leading startups where i had the opportunity to work as a web developer and a ui designer after that particular experience i did get to know that i'm quite interested in ui ux design mm-hmm. so all these experiences have been really important uh, for my placement journey uh, during the last few months okay so apart from that i did do a lot of projects and i could uh, you know work in a lot of domains of computer science using ai ml mm-hmm. uh, cloud technologies iot mm-hmm. and i had I could collaborate. I was able to collaborate with a lot of friends, as well as I worked under certain faculties right. uh, to do various projects. Mm-hmm. So apart from coding, algorithm, and everything, I do have certain hobbies as well. I love listening to music, and I'm keen in playing sports, especially tennis and basketball. Okay. I love working in a team, and I always try to take up as many leadership positions that come mm-hmm. my way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. Yeah. Okay that's great thank you so much um you cannot tell us about the placement process like how many rounds were there and what they comprised of Yeah so I got uh, placed in a company called Kinaxis so uh, I I got placed as a machine learning developer uh, so Kinaxis came to our uh, college for recruitment way back in July at the, I mean the last week of July Okay so uh, after the mail was sent we had to fill a google form uh, so Uh, the usual process of how we apply for a company so th- there were totally five roles that that were given to us so talking about the five roles that were given the first one was escalation developer then we had a test developer machine learning developer machine learning test developer the mm. last one was algorithm java de- developer okay i read through the job descriptions of all the five roles mm. and i was keenly interested in machine learning test and machine learning mm. developer roles so mm. i applied for that mm. So each role had a completely different test. So okay. all of the all of the tests did not happen in the same okay. way. The exam pattern was different. The questions mm. were different, mm. and even the exam platform was different. Okay. Every everybody had it totally differently. After the pre-placement talk, mm. we were uh, given um, all the information about where our test will happen, what mm. to do, what we what will be doing, and everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So um, another thing is, after we applied for it, for each role there was only a short list of one fifty people for each role. Okay. They did not short list everybody to write mm-hmm. the test. The short list, I think, happened based on resume and our CGP as well, mm-hmm. as well as uh, based on the roles that we have applied for, whether we have prior experiences. Mm-hmm. All that was taken into consideration. Mm-hmm. So uh, the test happened. So talking about the test, like in brief, mm. so I I had that a total of six coding questions. Mm. So one of the question uh, was SQL, which is really straightforward. Anybody will be able to solve mm. it. Mm. The second question was also an SQL based question. This was a little difficult. I would call it moderately hard actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, there were certain uh, key things that we had to notice. If we didn't, uh, I mean, we can't really solve all the test cases. Mm-hmm. So that was one thing that I had to note, and it was a little difficult to solve. I don't think I passed all the test cases. I mm-hmm. think I didn't pass one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, the third question was uh, a string-based question, but there was a constraint to solve it only using Python. Okay. 
And then the other two questions are all data structures related questions where we could solve it with any coding language. Okay. Hmm. Apart from that, we had MCQs, uh, logical reasoning questions, and I, I, I think around 10 to 15 analytical questions. That hmm. is, we were given a lot of bar graphs and charts and we had to give our insights and answer questions based hmm. on that. Hmm. So this whole uh, e- exam that is a set test happened for two hours hmm. and time was sufficient for all of us to complete. Hmm. So after this uh, test that happened, after a week or so, we got a short list. That is initially they gave a short list only for the other three roles, that is hmm. escalation, Java developer and test developer. Hmm. Hmm. For machine learning developer alone, it took two more weeks for them okay. to short list. Hmm. So for the other three roles, all the interview process happened virtually. Okay. But then this was the first ever year that they called people for only machine learning developer role. They hmm. called people hmm. directly to the office hmm. for the interview. Hmm. So like we got a mail from VIT two weeks later after after the test that we are all they shortlisted eight people for each role. Okay. For the interview. Interviews. Hmm. Initially they told they'll take one person for each role, but hmm. after which for certain roles alone they took two two people. Okay. So that was it. Hmm. So, uh, so uh, we were all called directly to the company, uh, the Chennai of- Ch- Chennai office. Okay. So the Chennai office is in the World Trade Center. Okay. So we are all given, uh, you know, only thing that they said in the mail is, this is not an interview, have it like an experience, Mm. you can interact with all the employees, we can have like a proper interview experience is what you want. What happens in the end is totally, we can't, it's not in your hand or Mm. our hand, Mm. but just enjoy the process. Yeah. After we got this mail, uh, we were called, I think this um, interview process happened in the first week of August, Mm. something like that. Hmm. Yeah, we all went for the interview. I think there were 16 of us in total for each row. Two roles, machine learning developer, machine learning test developer, hmm. totally 16 people. Hmm. So, um, the interview process, were, were, uh, it happened in three, uh, there were three rounds in total. Hmm. So, the first round was a technical round, the second round was a technical come managerial round, and hmm. the third round, th- third round was an HR round. Okay. So the first technical round, I went inside and uh, only thing that was, they actually saw all our codes properly, like whatever we, whatever we wrote in the test. Right. So the thing was, I had I had written some coding questions, the two questions that I told at the last, those coding questions I had written in Java. Okay. They were like, okay, you, we, you have written all the codes in Java, hmm. can you write the same thing in Python? Hmm. So since it's a machine learning developer role, they mm-hmm. expect you to know Python. Mm-hmm. So that was the whole criteria for that. Uh-huh. So I had to, um, they gave me a piece of paper and I had to write the exact same question in Python. Mm-hmm. So I had to write both the questions in Python, that okay. was the first thing that I had to do. Mm-hmm. And this is not a one-on-one interview, there are five people who took the interview. Okay. Yeah. So the next thing was I was given a data data mm. set. Mm. I, I had a laptop also with me, mm. and, and they gave me a piece of paper as well. Mm. So the next next thing was uh, they they gave me a data set. So they gave me a problem statement. Everything they explained. It's not like it was I had to oh. type or thing. Mm. They just uh, gave me a problem statement. Mm. So the whole round was about me trying to brainstorm my idea with all mm. the five. All the five people had different different mm. ideas according to the problem statement. Mm. I had to sit and convince each one of them as to why my idea is good. Mm. So uh, after I gave my idea, they were like, "Okay, your idea is fine." They were after I had to convince all of them. Mm. It took like half not to convince mm. each one of them. Mm. Uh, like during this whole process, they asked me a lot of statistics questions, mm. a little bit of data structures questions. They were just trying to test whether I'm able to manage whatever mm. questions they're trying to ask me. Mm. They, they ask me even test, testing based question, automation questions, mm. normal mm. Uh, questions. Uh, starting from scratch until deployment, will I be able to complete mm. a project? Mm. That was all, that is the idea about the entire interview. Mm. So after this, I had to write the entire idea as a Python code in a piece of paper. Mm. So after all that, I was asked, uh, it was completely based on resume after mm. that. Mm. Uh, whether I'm good at Python, whether I've used Python in mm. any of my previous experiences. Mm. I had to explain all my internships in depth, my projects. They were very interested in machine learning projects in specific. Mm. So after this particular interview got over, I think it took about one one and a half hours for this interview mm. alone. It, was, it happened for one and a half hours. Mm. After that, um, we got another short list. We were all there and they came and uh, mm-hmm. took. Uh, so for each role, they took three three people. Okay. They eliminated uh, the other five people, hmm. and all of them had to leave. So for the sec, all the three rounds happened on the same day itself. Hmm. So the second round uh, was a managerial plus tech round. Hmm. Uh, so this round was 
virtual actually we had to do uh, the whole round virtually in a television actually mm. we had to do it because the person was supposed to take the interview was not available mm. or something like that yeah. mm. so this interview was all about you, me selling my resume to the interviewer mm. so i had to convince him why i deserve to get this job mm. why uh, did i choose this role and why do i deserve to get this job and why didn't i choose the other roles that mm. were given mm. yeah so uh, i i started talking about that I, I told you right. I did uh, an internship as a yeah. machine learning engineer in one mm. company. Mm-hmm. The whole interview was about that particular internship. Mm. I had to talk about exactly what I how I started to how I ended. Why I used this algorithm. Why I didn't use this. It was more mm. like a brainstorming session. Uh, he, he was giving me suggestions. I said you could have done this right. I was like uh, actually I tried this, but I know I thought this is better. Right. Uh, we had like a discussion it went on about for 45 minutes actually mm. and then about the other machine learning projects as well about the different analytics that i've done mm. and everything it was just like normal in- interaction he asked me certain questions he tried to test my technical skills right mm. he did ask me whether i'll be able to come every day to oh, office mm. yes yeah, i'm managerial based questions as well he asked mm. after this round everybody who went for the second round were directly called for the third round there was no elimination okay. or filtering to the front mm-hmm. so the final round was an hr round hr was there he just asked simple questions but this round also went for 45 minutes actually okay. uh he just asked questions like he just asked questions based on my personality whether i i can work well in a team mm. uh whether i'll be able to handle stress it is actually a stress interview he tried to tell me that my my resume is not good mm. but i had to tell him that okay this is how i am this is what i can do mm. and stuff like He was also like, uh, "Why have you done so much? Why do you have? Uh, why why is your resume so filled? Hmm. Stuff like that." So I had to like tell him that this is how we have to prepare ourselves yeah. to yeah. attend play, camp, campus placements, or else we won't even get shortlisted. Hmm. So the whole round was based on that. Hmm. So this is it. Uh, that's it. The interview got over, and no, that's all. After one week, we got the results. Okay. okay. So they selected totally nine people overall for okay. all the five roles together. Nine people. Nine people. Okay. Okay. Okay that's great thank you so much for sharing your experience and congratulations again yeah thank so, you yeah and do you have any suggestions or anything that you want to share from what you learned yeah uh, definitely campus placements are extremely difficult i mean to, to get a job right now this year and definitely next year also it's going to be really difficult yeah uh, considering the number of people and Correct. you know uh, things are going to be difficult yeah only thing is uh, you need to consistently maintain your cgpa that is one thing that you can do on, on your own right apart from that it's all about um, which company that you get into all that is uh, secondary but first thing that you need to do is to maintain your cgpa hmm. Hmm. having a cgpa of about 8.5 is according to me safe because for most companies if you have a cgpa of about 8.5 they mostly shortlist you hmm. to write the test hmm. if you have less than 8.5 mostly you won't be able to sit for most of the companies mm-hmm. so having 8.5 is safe apart from that uh, definitely uh, concentrate on your projects like just don't, don't do it for the sake of it to get right. marks to complete your j components just you know like uh, properly learn and what you're doing because mm-hmm. in in your interviews if you have uh, put that particular project in your resume you will be question based on that right. next important thing is make your resume really well resume is one of the key factors in uh, getting a job uh, so whatever you write in your resume make sure that you know what you've written and mm-hmm. you know you actually worked in it then only like put it in your resume if you're mm-hmm. not sure about a particular language also like if you are really good at java and you're not good at c++ don't even put c++ in your resume mm-hmm. because uh, if they if the interviewer sees that they'll be like oh you know c++ as well just write the code in c++ mm-hmm. so if you can't then it it will be a bad thing right, right? so just Put whatever you know in your resume. Hmm. Apart from that, projects are important, and try to do as many internships as possible. Just be active in hmm. doing whatever you do, hmm. and try to be a part of a lot of clubs as well. Hmm. Uh, try to take leadership positions. All of that is very important for the HR and managerial round hmm. because they do test whether we'll be a good leader, we'll be right. able to work in a team. Right. So being part of clubs will basically give them an idea that hmm. you can work in a team. Right. So hmm. that is it. Apart from that, yeah, uh, prepare for placements. uh try to do dsa and uh, the only dsa is not important aptitude is very very important because in all company tests aptitude is also an important major role hmm. most of the people are able to crack the coding but uh, mcqs are 
the, uh, are where the difference is made. So hmm. uh, try to just write the test and all the best. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your experience and the suggestions. I'm sure it's going to help many people. And yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. say thank you for watching all my videos and giving me so much support so i hope uh, these videos are really helpful if you have any suggestions or any comments please do comment or reach out to me on linkedin or instagram or wherever you want okay and let me know i'll try to implement any anything that you suggest apart from that i would surely suggest that you share my videos and subscribe to my channel while you're watching and stay tuned because i'm going to upload so many more interview experiences in the coming days so because it's still the placement season for the next couple of months at least so for the next couple of months you'll be getting continuous videos so please do subscribe and stay tuned and thank you all for watching